Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hosea chapter 5, verse 9, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, and Joshua chapter 6, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Lord Jesus, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for being our God and our friend, even in this time of the last days, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us instructions, details, and helping us to understand what your priority is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Hosea chapter 5, verse 9. Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of punishment among the tribes of Israel. I make known what is sure. All right. So, um, okay. So Ephraim um, here it represents the actual tribe of Ephraim. Remember, um, whenever you see Ephraim in the scriptures of mostly the Old Testament, you're going to be talking sometimes about Israel in general right? Not just the tribe of Ephraim, but because they're such a large tribe and they make up so many um, people, sometimes their name is used synonymously with Israel. And so um, Ephraim here is speaking specifically about the tribe of Ephraim. And so it's saying Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of punishment. So he is going to do um a devastation to them, right? And so it says, among the tribes of Israel, I make known what is sure. So amongst all the other tribes, he is going to have a special punishment for Ephraim. And so um, the one of the reasons um, Ephraim is standing out here is because of the whoredom, right? Um, chapter five talks about the um, idolatry of Ephraim um, as well as, and you know, when you're such a big tribe and you're participating in idolatry, you're going to lead other tribes astray, right? You're going to lead others astray in your actions. And so, and then also on top of that, um, whenever Ephraim would face situations um, with other um, other countries or have issues, um, then they went to like the Assyrians, right? They would go to other other countries who were even more horrible. Like they were ended up, you know, going to Assyria and, and, you know, God was like very upset by that, right? Instead of coming to him for help, they prefer to try to do things through diplomacy and, um, you know, try to get an ally and all those things. But God was very, very displeased with that. And so and along with the idolatry and just, you know, God saw those things as very um, ugly and he, he was going to punish them, right? Amongst the tribes, he was going to punish Ephraim specifically. He called them out. And so, um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Genesis chapter six, verse three. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh. His day shall be 120 years. All right. And so this is just talking about the fact that, um, man is going to have an end as far as God's spirit abiding with man, right? God's spirit is not going to always be here on the earth, right? And so we know that his spirit um, then um, was was his presence um, that would come to the earth, right? And then also the spirit that God had breathed into man, right? And so um, but now his spirit actually abides in the earth with men. And then um, at the end of this, this era of, of what we call the grace era, um, then the spirit is going to go back to heaven, right? And so man will no longer have the spirit of God dwelling here with him during that tribulation period. 
All right. And so um, it says, then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he has flesh. His day shall be 120 years. And that 120 in the strong concordance um, means man, right? Um, and so uh, it, the the third verse that the Lord gave me was Joshua chapter six, verse three. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you shall do for six days. All right. And so this is um talking about um the circuitous march, I think that's what it's called, around the um the city of Jericho, right? And so it says, You shall march around the city, all the men of war. Right. So this is a specific group of people marching around the city, getting ready to capture the city. And it says all the men of war going around the city once. Thus, you shall do for six days. And of course, that six also um, is symbolic of man. And so um, here I felt like the Lord was saying um, uh, the fact that uh with the tribes, this is just specifically talking about tribulation and um, what is going to occur with men. Um, God is going to remember um, the things that have been done, right? Historically, he's going to remember the wrongs that have been done. He's going to remember the the deeds of men, right? Um, as it relates to Ephraim, specifically the tribe of Ephraim, he, I feel like he was, he was saying that tribe in itself, he still is going to, um, visit punishment, right. Specifically, um, outside of just the realm of Israel, specifically the tribe of Ephraim. And so, um, then also, um, in the Genesis chapter six, verse three, where it's talking about his spirit not abiding with men. It is just talking about the leaving of the Holy Spirit during the rapture, right? And so when that spirit leaves the earth, we are going to be going with that, the church, right? Those who have allowed the spirit to dwell inside of us and we be led by the spirit, all right? And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me, the Joshua 6, 3, um, is speaking about taking the city of Jericho, right? Taking what belongs to us. And um, though this, even even though when you look at this uh, taking of Jericho, um, this, it seems like such a violent taking of a city, right? But they actually did not have to do a siege on the city of Jericho the walls came tumbling down through obedience, right? And that is a symbol of wise brides, right? There's this set apart group, which are considered the men going to war. So those are the people who have worked for God. Those are the people who have put their hand to the plow. Those are the people who are set apart for the service of God, right? So they are wise brides. And so they are walking around the city in obedience, right? They are walking around um, in silence for six days days right and and um getting ready to take the city on the seventh day at the completion right and so seven being the number of completion and so um this is speaking of the obedience of man while he was here on earth right and in in doing what god said to do so they will walk around every single day and that is symbolic of us doing the will of the father every single day and the reward is that we're not going to have to siege the city right when we we live for the city to come right are the city that we are taking is going to the gates are going to open and we're going to walk right in just like with the city of jericho the people didn't have to knock the walls down. The walls came down because God allowed that to happen, right? Through their obedience, God knocked down the walls in the heavenlies, right? And so in the same way, when we are taken um, to the heavenly realm, when we get to this gate, we're just going to be able to walk right in. Why? Because the obedience has already been there. The wise bride has already been obedient. He has already, she has already um, done the the march around the city. She has already been obedient to the words and the instructions that have been given. So now the 
city will be given to them, the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, that you have a plan for tribulation. You have a plan for your bride and her protection and her inheritance. Thank you, God, that we can um, abide with you and not just your spirit. Stay and abide with us on earth, Lord God. We say thank you. We love you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins and help us to be ready and obedient in the taking of this new kingdom, in the in the occupation, in the living in our father's house, Lord God, and receiving our inheritance. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to rededicate their heart to the Lord, maybe you've fallen away or you have gotten off the path that you know God has placed you on, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for getting off track with you, Lord. You know me, you know where I should have been, you know what I should have done. And I say, I'm sorry, Lord God, put back purpose in me, Lord Jesus. Help me to do your will, Father God. Forgive me for all of my sins and help me to get back on this straight and narrow path with you, Jesus. Help me to be led by your spirit and not turn away from your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Um, One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys take care and be blessed.